Well, during the Obama years, Joe Biden didn't spend all of his time attending the funerals of foreign dictators or acting as the administration's emissary to Ukraine, where his son was getting rich at a do-nothing job. One of his other jobs was running the administration's Title IX policy. Before the Obama administration, most colleges handled claims of sexual harassment and sexual assault the way you'd probably want them handled if you were accused of doing something awful. Offenses were narrowly defined, as they are in court, rather than broadly, and the allegations required had to meet a high burden of proof, as they should. Under Biden's oversight, though, the Obama administration changed everything. They sent a letter to every one of this country's more than 4,000 colleges and universities with a stern warning. They said that schools would lose all federal funding unless they completely altered the way they treated sexual assault allegations on campus. Under the Biden rule, the accused were judged under the lowest standard of evidence. They were subjected to kangaroo courts where they could not effectively use legal counsel or contest the accusations against them. Across the country, and if you have kids in college, you know this is true, young men found their lives and their careers totally destroyed, not to mention their reputations, by accusations that were sometimes not only untrue, but laughably untrue. In at least one case, a student was expelled from college over an assault, even as police were criminally charging his accuser for filing a false police report in the same case. That was the America that Joe Biden created. What would happen if Joe Biden had to play by the same rules he made now? Well, he'd be done. Tara Reid's allegations are not proven. We don't know if they are true. But far weaker claims destroyed many young men on college campuses. But of course, Biden isn't playing by those rules and never would. Why isn't he forced to? Because the American feminist movement may be the single most corrupt movement in the world. It's more corrupt than the government of Equatorial Guinea. It's more corrupt than the World Health Organization. There is nothing more corrupt than institutional feminism. And if you want proof, look no further than Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York. Two years ago, Gillibrand won Brett Kavanaugh's life and family destroyed. He was guilty, she said. She could feel it. Her account is credible, and I believe her. We know that Judge Kavanaugh was not honest when he came to the Senate Judiciary Committee. She spoke her truth so bravely, so strongly, so honestly, and we believed her. Judge Kavanaugh has not asked to have the FBI review these claims. Is that, the, is that the reaction of an innocent person? It is not. To refuse to treat this properly and try to confirm Judge Kavanaugh at any cost tells women that once again they are not important and they are not to be believed. I believe her because she's telling the truth. Has there ever been in the last 235 years a dumber person to serve in the United States Senate? Probably not. Her argument was Brett Kavanaugh has not demanded that the FBI forensically go through his entire life. He doesn't appear to trust the FBI. Therefore, he must be guilty. No trial needed. Well, yesterday, Gillibrand got her chance to respond to the allegations, the credible allegations that Tara Reid has made against Joe Biden. Even if you haven't already seen this, we bet you can guess what her response was. She has come forward. She has spoken. Uh, and They've done an investigation in several outlets. Um, those investigations, Vice President Biden has called for himself. Um, Vice President Biden has vehemently denied these allegations, and I support Vice President Biden. Hmm. Has Joe Biden begged the FBI to take a close look at his personal life over the past 50 years? Oh, he hasn't. He must be guilty. That's no longer her position. Why? Because political circumstances have changed. We want to